Despite pressure from the administration, a rough start to the year, biotech has seen a rebound this year. Our next guest is betting that that recovery will continue into 2026. So joining us now, Salvine Richter. She is the lead U.S. biotech analyst at Goldman Sachs Research. And Salvine, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. What's interesting to me is that these names uh, of these, you know, these stocks of these pharma companies that did ink this deal with the president just today all traded higher despite the fact that they're bringing prices down in line globally. Why? Why did we see that trade go that way? I think it's because it's an overhang removed for the group that was essentially um, trading lower ahead of the uncertainty of what would play out. And now that we have the certainty, you can price it accordingly as needed for these companies. And also, in some cases, by bringing X U.S. prices in line with U.S. prices, there's added upside for some of the revenue potential here. Are we going to see more of these types of deals get struck? Because they've been kind of coming out in increments. I believe there's a couple left from the original group that um, that plan to strike a deal with, with the administration. And then we should see that filter down into smaller biotechs um, and pharma companies. And, and, you know, we look to seeing all of this playing out on Trump Rx as we as we look to 2026. You got reports uh, crossing and continuing to cross even in this hour that RFK uh, is poised to make some changes to the vaccine schedule uh, ch for childhood vaccines. You've also had Moderna just today popping up 9 percent on funding for a bird flu vaccine. How do you navigate that piece of the market? I think there's some uncertainty on the side of the vaccine businesses. Um, I mean, we look at a company like Moderna, um, while they do has a, have a respiratory vaccine business, they also have a cancer vaccine business, and we'll look to some of that play out next year. Um, but I think we are, you know, what we really have right now in, in biopharma is we had a trifecta that played out. We had, after almost three years of negative earnings revisions, um, that stabilized, if anything, you're starting to see potential upside for this group as you head to 2026. You also had... Um, the drug pricing overhang, which now with these agreements being signed with the Trump administration, you know, allows these companies to kind of work because you understand you have certainty around their business models. And we've had a bit of a rotation away from the dominant AI trade. And so as we look to these companies, um, they can now start to, A, work around their business models for 2026. But I think also you, we will see a second derivative trade, which is that of, of M&A that plays out broadly for the group. And, um, you know, while I think, as you just pointed out, we still kind of un don't fully understand how certain parts of the regulatory frame may work, maybe with regard to vaccines, I think that have been somewhat appreciated in the stocks of some of these companies. All right. So in light of all of that, what are your picks for 2026? So on the large cap side, I think we're looking at Amgen and Regeneron here to have upside on numbers. But the laggard trade on the large cap side would be Biogen. Um, and on the, uh, the smid cap side, we're watching some of the innovation trades, but even more broadly. And we're looking at um, cardiovascular disease to the evolution of the obesity trade, as well as the um, evolution of, of I&I and, and obviously M&A to be some of the big themes um, that play out next year, as well as, as cancer. Cancer is going to be a key focus.